I spent 200 days on a deserted island in Stardew Valley. This video took just so long to produce, so please do like the video and subscribe. I try to upload the highest quality videos I can, so I promise you won't regret it. Anyways, enjoy the video. For a bit of context, the mod pack I'm using basically adds a whole new island map and doesn't allow me to leave, as well as adding a couple of survival aspects such as a food bar, weather and temperature sickness, to make the challenge extra difficult. In the morning of day 101, I wandered around my island, wondering what I should dedicate these 100 days to. Eventually, I decided that since my food situation was under control, I wanted to make my island look good. In my southern orchard, I wanted a lively, bustling area with a large road going through the middle, surrounded by buildings and animals. On my main island, I wanted a proper path all around with streetlights and small buildings surrounding it, and lots of decoration on all the small islands dotted around. I was extremely excited to get going. On day 102, I realized how many basic resources I would need to craft up all of the path, fencing, and general decoration that I wanted. So I grabbed all of my wood, hardwood, and stone and put them in a separate chest before heading off to the mine, since I didn't even have a single stack of stone. By midnight, I had around 450 stones, so I returned home, put away my loot, started the fire, and headed off to bed. In the morning of day 103, I headed down to the orchard and did some planning of where I wanted my farm buildings to go. After moving my coop and my mayonnaise machines, I decided to just get started on the road. So I made five of each stone path and compared them, before concluding that I wanted to use the stone walkway floor. I crafted a bunch of them, then spent some time making the makeshift road from one side to the middle. I then made some cobblestone path, which I used to connect my coops to the main path. I then decided to spend the rest of the day until midnight down in the mines collecting stone. On day 104, I grabbed a persimmon, then ran straight to the mines to get stone. But this time, I had revised a brand new method. I would go down to level 1, break all the large rocks that gave me 10 stone, then go up again and repeat. As it turns out, as effective as it was, it was extremely boring, so I returned back to my house with around 400 stone, and spent the rest of the day planting pine cones in my tree farm, so I could get a bunch of wood. In the morning of day 105, I picked some juniper berries, then sold them because I needed 6,000 gold to build a barn. I then headed down to my orchard where I tended to my animals and finished off the makeshift main road going across the area. I also made a small path going from the entrance to the road. I made a small hole right in the middle where I built a well before making some fences around the place as well as a campfire. On day 106, I wandered down to my orchard and was met by Robin. How did she get here? I thought I was on a deserted island. I spent the morning decorating around my campfire, then spending all of my remaining battery packs crafting up six lamp posts, which I scattered around the area. I also planted a variety of tree seeds around the campfire and fertilized them. After that, I decided to head off to the mines and grind there for stone for the remainder of the day. In the morning of day 107, I wooded my crops, then noticed that not one of my new pine cones had grown. Do they just not grow in winter? How do I almost have 400 hours in this game and still not know that? I then went down to my orchard and noticed that my small trees were pink. I'm hoping that was the fertilizer. I then named my new chicken Happy Face and spent the rest of the day fishing on the pier, then selling everything, in order to get closer to getting a barn. On day 108, I harvested some juniper berries, then tended to my animals before collecting all of my forageables in the cave and heading straight off to the mines. I spent the entire day there collecting stone. That night was Christmas night, so I saw Santa flying by across the screen. I was very excited on day 109 because I had just been sent an entire inventory filled with brand new decorations from Robin. So I ran downwards to my orchard and started decorating. The first thing I tried to make was a park, but no matter what I tried, it just never looked good, so I just <laughs> threw them away. I then made a small blacksmithing area next to my campfire, which after some experimentation I thought it didn't look too bad. I finished off the day by making a small creepy graveyard in the top right corner of the area. In the morning of day 110, I had some smoked fish for breakfast, then headed down to the orchard and spent some time redecorating the blacksmithing area, as I didn't really like how it looked. It took me all day to change the flooring, add two lights, and take away a bunch of the other decor, but in the end, it was worth it, because it looked good. I finished off the day by having a look around the whole area and was satisfied by the way everything was slowly coming together. 
On day 111, I harvested some berries, then cleared out my cave before excitedly grabbing a bunch of new decorations that the wizard had sent me. I ran down to the orchard and spent the entire day down there, experimenting on all different kinds of ways to decorate the area. But by nightfall, I wasn't happy with the way it came out at all, so I decided to go simple, like I did with the blacksmithing area. And it turned out a whole lot better. I also noticed that my trees had grown all around the campfire area, so I planted one more tree and was satisfied. Day 112 was the last day of winter, which I was very happy about, because it meant that I could see all of my decor without the disgusting white floor and snow. When I headed down to the orchard, I realized that I had enough gold to build a barn, so I grabbed the needed resources and crafted it, next to my coops. I then redecorated the area between the buildings and decided to spend the rest of the day down in the mines, collecting up stone, as I was almost running out. I was met at the door in the morning of day 113 by Kent. Again, how did he get here? But that morning something exciting happened. My lemon tree finally produced, and I could finally get a sorbet. I grabbed all of the ingredients and threw them in. I needed sugar. Luckily I had been sent a bunch of sugar from Pierre earlier, so I grabbed one and put them all in the sorbet machine. I then spent some time while waiting for it to finish, planting all of the mixed seeds that I had gotten over winter, then grabbing the finished sorbet. It was overpowered. I then headed down to the orchard where I was met by a surprise. The floor was purple. After some deliberation, I decided that it looked okay with the aesthetic I was going for. I named my new chicken after Elon Musk's child before finding a strange capsule in the ground and spending the rest of the day down in the mines once again, grinding for stone. In the morning of day 114, I harvested my fruit trees, then went down to my orchard area to tend to my chickens, then went back over to my main island where I spent some time planting mahogany trees. I then decided to spend the rest of the day fishing off of the pier. My fishing skills were so superb that day that most of my catch was iridium quality, so I was sure I was going to make lots of money that night. On day 115, I watered my crops, then tended to my animals down in the orchard. I then crafted up a bunch of oak benches, which I spent some time meticulously scattering around the area to make it seem more bustling and lively. I then returned to my home where I made a bunch of small plants, topiary trees, and manicured pines, which I went down to the orchard and placed. I then reorganized a couple of lights to end off the day. In the morning of day 116, I harvested some fruit, then went down to do some path decorating near my campfire, then did some clearing out of the rocks and logs that had spawned. I then had a little play around refining the campfire area and the blacksmithing area, before noticing that my barn had finished its construction. Seeing as I had nothing currently being built, I ordered a coop, which I placed next to the entrance, then spent the rest of the entire day making the surroundings of it look nice, with all kinds of decorations. On day 117, I noticed that I had an upgraded watering can and hoe, since I had leveled up to farming 5. I then picked up some pine tar, checked on my tree farm, then headed down to craft and place 3 new mayonnaise machines. I then started a new sorbet processing, then decided that I wanted to see my orchard at night in the springtime. So I sat on a bench and waited. Here's a very cool waiting time lapse. Was that enjoyable? At 10pm, I got up from my bench and had a wander around the area before grabbing my finished sorbet and heading off to bed. On day 118, I grabbed some fruit and watered my crops, then finally let my animals out of their coops. Since I had forgotten to previously, it seemed like I forgot to feed them as well. I then named my new chicken Afsadgs, then made some mayonnaise before clearing out my area for a new future barn. I then decided to spend the rest of the day chopping trees on my farm, then replanting the seeds. In the morning of day 119, I harvested a whole bunch of parsnips, then sold them all, as well as some other produce, so I could get closer to getting a second cosmetic barn. I then tended to my animals and grabbed some mayonnaise, which I sold, then decided to fish off of my pier for the rest of the day. I even got an achievement, the old marina, which I was very happy about. On day 120, I grabbed some honey, then picked up some forage next to my farm. It was an unlucky clover, which was a cursed item. It took 125 energy and 10 luck if I ate it, so I decided not to. I then tended to my animals and did a little redecorating around my coop before building up a small little farm opposite to it. I then went back and grabbed the very last of my seeds, which I planted in there. I then sold some mayonnaise and fished for the rest of the day. 
In the morning of day 121, I harvested a single potato, tended to my animals, then ordered the construction of another barn next to my newest coop. I then wooded my crops in this small cosmetic farm, then grabbed some mayo, which I sold. I then thought it would be a fun idea if I ate the unlucky clover and descended into the mines, so that's exactly what I did. Unsurprisingly, most of the levels were completely barren, with absolutely no ores in sight. Eventually, after collecting a bunch of rocks, I got bored and headed home. On day 122, I noticed that I had a new skill bar in my inventory, cooking. I was level zero. The first thing I did was collect some pine tar and check on my tree farm before realizing that my vanilla tree had finally produced. So I did what any person would do with vanilla, make a candle. While it was processing, I harvested my fruit trees and tended to my animals, then went down to chop some mahogany trees on the western island. I then fished for the rest of the day. That night, I had a witch come to my farm and curse one of my chickens. Which was a good thing, I think. On day 123, I wooded my cauliflowers and petted my chickens before grabbing some mayonnaise and checking for eggs in my coops. I then noticed that the witch had just left a void egg, which I could incubate into a void chicken. I then returned home where I crafted a chest, which I placed behind the coop so I could have a storage area for leftover eggs and other produce. I then decided to fish for the rest of the day before making some canned sardines and heading off to bed. I woke up on day 124 to a letter from Bear Lewis telling me that the egg festival was tomorrow. I'll be sure to attend. I then grabbed some honey and harvested my fruit trees before going down to my orchard. There, I decided to build up a shipping bin since it was a pain to walk all the way home every time I wanted to sell something. So I made one next to the entrance. I then noticed that my barn was done, so I wanted to fill the final space with a fish pond. But sadly, I didn't have enough gold, so I decided to wait until tomorrow to place it, because my mayonnaise was sure to get me over 5,000. On day 125, I wooded my crops, then had some smoked fish for breakfast before heading straight back down to the orchard to tend to my animals. A new chicken was hatched that day, which I named Spunk. With the incubator free, I decided to throw in the void egg. I was then about to build the pond when I realized that I didn't have enough resources, so I fished for a considerate amount of time getting them. When I was finally finished, I went down and placed them next to my farm. With that spot filled, all I had left was the area directly opposite, which after some consideration, I decided decided to place a silo. I then chopped trees for the rest of the day. In the morning of day 126, I harvested some fruit and chopped some trees, before heading down to check on Robin's progress. I then snacked on some cashews and decided to spend the entire rest of the day down in the depths of the mines, grinding for stone, ores and gemstones, as well as killing monsters when I got the chance. On day 127, I picked my ripe cauliflowers and grabbed some eggs, then named a new chicken Guck. I also noticed that my fish pond was finished its construction, but I didn't quite like how everything lined up, so I took some time fixing them. I then did a bit of path decor and placed a bunch of trees around before ordering my new silo on the other side of the road. I then smelted up some copper bars for the rest of the day. In the morning of day 128, I grabbed some copper bars, then went down to tend to my animals. I then decided to dedicate the day to decorating the small area next to my silo. I placed a couple of oak benches and stone slabs around the area, then put some houseplants around as well. I then finished it off by crafting and placing some grass starter. By the end, I was relatively happy about how it looked, and I was excited for when my silo finished being built. On day 129, I spent the morning chopping trees in the big tree farm near my crop farm, in the big western tree farm area, and on the little western island where mahogany trees grew. When I was done replanting, I finally headed down to the orchard and tended to my animals, watered my little farms, then spent the rest of the day collecting up and selling some of my mayonnaise. And finally, on day 130, my orchard was finished, so I had a quick stroll through the area to appreciate all of my hard work. I eventually came to the end and sat peacefully on a bench in the middle of the pine forest campfire area. I was content with my work, but because the orchard was finished, that meant that I had to now decorate the entire island with paths, buildings, and lanterns to liven the whole place up. The only problem, the orchard had sucked almost all of my resources, as collecting wood would be passive thanks to my tree farms, the only thing I needed to collect by hand was stone. So I headed down to the mines and grinded until I had 5 stacks of wood and 10 stacks of stone.
And finally, on day 159, I had gotten the last of the resources that I needed. I had almost 11 stacks of stone and over 5 stacks of wood. I then decided to show the other progress that I had made over the time. First, I had caught, smoked and canned a bunch of fish, made a lot of money from selling mayonnaise and made a big battery pack farm. I was very excited to start decorating the island. I forgot to record on day 160. All I did was experiment with floor types and start to lay some foundation. I was reading some comments on day 161 and I found one saying to put on L seasonal buildings. So I did and it looked just perfect with the aesthetic I was going for. The first thing I did was tend to my animals while down in my orchard, then head back up to keep placing down my path. I also moved my lightning rod farm as it was a little in the way. When I got down to my big tree farm, since I already had plenty of wood, I decided that I would just cut through it in two path directions. It would lower the efficiency of the farm, but it would look good. When I was finished that, night had fell, so I just headed to bed. In the morning of day 162, I grabbed all of my machines, and with the extra space that I had made, I decided to build a mill with the wool that Emily had sent me, then temporarily placed down my machines in my cave. I then continued to place path all around my island until everywhere but the beach had a path for easy accessibility. So I crafted up a bunch of stepping stones and spent the rest of the day scattering them around my island. I spent all of day 163 placing stone slabs all around my island, around my paths and especially along the beach, because full on paths wouldn't look good down there. When I was eventually finished, I attended to my animals and noticed that my tilapia pond was full, so I caught half of them and threw one in the smoker. In the morning of day 164, I was given some strange seeds by Gunter. I didn't know what to do with them, as I couldn't plant them or eat them. The first thing I did was collect some battery packs from my lightning rods, then craft a bunch of lampposts, which I spent the rest of the day placing down everywhere. When I was done, I decided to wait until nightfall to see how they all looked. By 10pm, I decided it was dark enough, and I wandered around, before placing a couple more lamps and heading off to bed. I'm really dumb, I didn't record again on day 165, all I did was cover my island's beaches in lights. On day 166 I collected some battery packs then tended to my animals, before heading back up to my home and pondering where I should move my mill, as I wanted more mills in other places. So I ended up placing one next to Nob's home. When I went out of build mode I was stuck inside the hitbox of my house. Nice. Luckily for me, I had just enough resources on me to build up another mill, so I placed one where the old one once stood. I was then forced to just sit in the house until 2am when I was knocked out. I woke up on day 167 to Emily at my door. How did she get here? She also asked about cloth, as if she hadn't just been sending it to me for the past year. When she was gone, I headed over to the southern island and cleared it out, before thinking of what I should build there. But when I tried to place something, I couldn't, as my other mill was still under construction. Great. I then tended to my animals and picked up my decorative plants as the end of summer was near. The next thing I did was craft up a cookout kit, which I placed down and had a look through. There were just so many recipes to choose from, so after cooking a couple of things, I spent the rest of the day experimenting with all different kinds of food. On day 168, I got a piece of mail from Demetrius teaching me about the moonlight jellies and how there was going to be a gathering that night. Someone needs to teach Demetrius how to shut up. The first thing I did was tend to my animals and check on my fish pond before chopping some trees on my tree farm, then fishing on my pier. After doing that for a while, I decided to just wait until midnight to see if any moonlight jellies would come to my island. They didn't. Disappointed, I headed off to bed. In the morning of day 169, I woke up to be met by Willy, who graciously gave me 5 fishing elixir, which is just unfairly overpowered. The first thing I did was tend to my animals, then decide to build something up on the southern island. I was scrolling through the buildings when I remembered that I had gotten a single iridium bar from an incredibly lucky drop in the mines, and I could use it to construct a slime hutch. But it was too big for that island, so I just put it below my home. I then decided to spend the rest of the day fishing with the elixir. When I I drunk it, I realized that the buffs went on for more than an hour. Very cool and balanced. 
On day 170, after tending to my animals, I decided to spend the entire day fishing. So I drunk an elixir and cast out my line. A little way into my fishing adventure, I hooked an extremely hard fish, which was super fast and annoying. But thanks to my massive fishing bar given to me by the elixir, I was eventually able to catch it. It turned out to be a swordfish, which I hoped sold for lots. I was met at the door by Marlin in the morning of day 171. How did- Who congratulated me on getting a slime hutch and gave me a slime egg, which I put inside the slime incubator in the slime hutch. I then tended to my normal animals before heading straight down to the bottom of the mines in search of some red slime eggs, which I was guessing would make me more money since they were from rarer and stronger slimes. But luck was not on my side and I spent the entire day down there and failed to get a single egg. So I gave up and headed home, where I put away my loot and headed off to bed. On day 172, I grabbed some honey and checked on my slime egg before tending to my animals and once again descending into the mines in search of a red slime egg. But amazingly and unexpectedly, by 10pm I had actually gotten a red slime egg. So I returned to the surface incredibly excited for my new future slime pet, who would hopefully make me lots of money. In the morning of day 173, I checked on my egg again before realizing that the egg incubator recipe was only one combat level away, so I could craft my own soon. I patted my chickens and watered my crops before heading back to the mines, but this time I went to the ice and iron levels between 40 and 80, because I wanted a blue slime egg, so my slime hut would be more colorful and diverse. But I didn't have luck again that day, so I gave up and returned home, where I fished off the eastern beach for the rest of the day. I woke up on day 174 to a message saying my slime egg had hatched, so I headed down to my slime hutch to take a look and put my red slime egg in the incubator. I then tended to my actual animals and once again spent all day down in the mines, grinding slimes looking for blue slime eggs. But even after the entire day, I had no luck once again. I said hello to my pet slime on day 175 before tending to my animals and deciding to craft up a slime press to increase my slime egg production. I placed it down and put 100 pieces of slime inside, starting the production of a slime egg. I then once again headed to the mines, this time in search of a purple slime egg, but after not finding any I figured that they were just somewhere else like Ginger Island or the Skull Caverns. Even though I was in red slime territory I didn't end up getting a red slime egg, so I returned home and chopped trees for the rest of the day. In the morning of day 176, my slime egg press had given me a green egg, the worst kind. I put it away, not disappointed at all, then headed down to tend to my animals, before realizing that my fish pond was full. So I fished half of them out again, before throwing one in the smoker and headed off to the mines once again, looking for a blue slime egg. And, as usual, I didn't get a slime egg, but I did get something even better. Made possible by a mod, I was lucky enough to have a slime drop me a a slime charmer ring, which made me take no damage or get slowed down by slimes. This would be just perfect for me when my slime hutch got eventually fully populated. I was very excited. Mayor Lewis had sent me a letter notifying me of the Stardew Valley Fair on day 177. Does he not know that- The first thing I did was check on my slimes which still hadn't produced anything. I then spent the entire morning going around my island picking blackberries as they weren't going to be in season for much longer. I then tended to my animals before once again heading off to the mines. By almost midnight I still hadn't gotten an egg so I decided to just grind for normal slime and use the slime egg press for more definite results. This was just not working. I could finally craft a keg on day 178 to make tea. The first thing I did was put away my loot then check on my slimes before tending to my animals to make some money. I then decided on a whim to spend the entire day placing fence all around my island to make it look more decorated and structured. I placed them until night fell then just went to bed completely forgetting to make some kegs. In the morning of day 179, I checked on my slimes and on my chickens before deciding to build up a stable. And since I didn't really need a horse for transportation, more for just having one, I thought it was a good idea to put the stable away from the house and on the small southern island near the orchard entrance. So I placed it down and spent the rest of the entire day decorating the surrounding area. By the time night fell, it was finished except for the pine trees that I had planted all around. 
I was also planning to get rid of the oak tree behind it, but I couldn't access it until the stable was finished being built. On day 180, I noticed that my small baby green slime was a slightly different shade of green to the others. I didn't really know what this meant, so I just left. The first thing I did was check on Robin's progress, then harvest some corn and tend to my animals, before smoking up some more fish. Since I had nothing to do until Robin finished building my stable, I decided to spend the rest of the day fishing off the eastern beach of my island. In the morning of day 181, I put a slime egg in my incubator, then headed over to my stable that had finally finished its construction. After a little more decoration, I was happy about how it looked, but I knew it would look much, much better at night time. So I waited. And when night fell, I was satisfied with how the area looked. I then tried to return home on my horse when I realized how useless my stable was, as my horse couldn't leave the island. I was forced to walk home on foot that night. How devastating. On day 182, my slimes had produced their very first slime, blob. So I harvested it, then noticed that my slightly different colored slime had grown up to be slightly different. I didn't know what that meant, so I just left. The next thing I did was tend to my animals, then decide to switch the spots of my mill and my stable, so I could at least kind of use my horse. Sadly, the horse did not come with the stable, and riding him around would have to wait until tomorrow. I then cleared out my cave for food before deciding to spend the rest of the night down in the mines, once again searching for slime eggs, but to no prevail. I got a letter on day 183 from Mayor Lewis. Does he not understand that I can't? The first thing I did was hop on my horse before realizing that I was trapped by the house. So I hopped off and realized that I too was trapped by the house. Nice. So I had to move the stable and thus I was free to ride around my island on my horse. I then went to my slime hutch and collected some slime before tending to my animals and watering my crops. I then wandered down to my tree farm and noticed that it was full of fully grown trees. So I spent the afternoon chopping them all down. On day 184, I collected some honey and checked on my slimes before spending the morning chopping trees in my tree farm and chopping mahogany trees on the little western island. I then replanted the seeds before tending to my animals and watering my crops. After that, I decided to clear out my cave of forageables, then spend the rest of the day fishing off of the beach. In the morning of day 185, I had two massive things that I wanted to achieve over some time. One, I wanted to craft a bunch of slime egg presses and slime incubators, as well as decorate the slime hutch as best as I could. And two, build up a shed to store all of my things, as I was getting a little unorganized with my thousands upon thousands of items. I was also going to color code and sign organize the shed, so I ordered my building and got going. And finally, on day 198, both of my tasks were complete. I headed into my slime hutch and picked up my two eggs which I started incubating. I also grabbed all of my slime globs which was very satisfying. I then headed over to my shed where all of my thousands upon thousands of items were organized in categories and color coded. I was incredibly incredibly happy with my progress. On day 199, the first thing I did was redo the flooring around where my chests were. I then tended to my slimes as well as my chickens in the orchard. I then checked on my fish pond and decided to spend the rest of the day fishing for trash. And only trash. In the morning of day 200, after tending to my slimes and my chickens, I wandered along my orchard, looking at all the progress that I had made. I was very happy with how everything had come together. I finished off the 100 days by riding my horse down to the beach and peacefully fishing for the rest of the day. Thank you all so much for watching. Sorry if the video was a little boring, but I had the most fun making this video that I have for a while. So if you enjoyed, please subscribe to my main and my second channel, as well as follow my Instagram, which is redtm underscore xd. I'll see you in about a week. Thanks for watching. Bye. Please subscribe.